Number 14. Global warming will produce rising sea levels partly due to melting ice caps, but also due to the expansion of water as average ocean temperatures rise. To get some idea of the size of this effect, calculate the change in length of a column of water one kilometer high for a temperature increase of one degree Celsius. Note that this calculation is only approximate because ocean warming is not uniform with depth. All right. So here we have a, a little picture. Let's just assume that uh, this level of water that's currently in the tank is about one kilometer high. And what we are tasked to do is we're going to try to find out, well, how high now does this water level rise? So let's say, let's draw a new little line here, all right? When the temperature of the water in here increases by one degree Celsius. So we have to ask ourselves, well, what's the nature of the expansion? All right, since we're dealing with a liquid, the expansion is a volume expansion, all right? Um, so now the case with the volume expansion is that if we assume that the, you know, ocean is contained within this, you know, uh, container, so to speak, right? I mean, the earth, the earth beneath, it's not really going to move much, all right? And also it's, you know, bordered by some land masses. So we can assume that the contents of the, uh, the sides, I should say, in the bottom of the container are fairly rigid. And the only way that the volume will expand will be upwards, Okay, so in other words, what I'm saying is that the new water level, let me shade it in here, might be something like like this. And forgive my modern day Picasso here, but this is why I teach science and definitely not art. All right, so let's just fill this in. The darker uh, blue will represent the old uh, height or the old volume, I should say, of water. And now the new will represent the, now the combination between the old and the new will represent the new volume. Okay, so let's write that in. So this right here will be considered, in the darker blue, will be considered the old volume. Let's call this V sub O uh, for old. Okay, now I chose to, you know, just pretend that this is, I don't know, it, is, it could be rectangular, it could be square, it doesn't matter. The could be cylindrical. You're all going to come, you're going to come up with the same answers at the end. Also check out number 11 because I did a detailed discussion on the same concept. So this will help, that, that problem will help reinforce what I'm saying here. So now this is length times width times height, okay? Um, now the new volume, uh, why don't we just put that in black now? All right, the new volume, the V sub N, N for new, will re remember it will be now this whole volume, the light blue in conjunction with the darker blue, okay? This whole region in here. All right, that'll represent the new volume. And let's write that in as length times width times height. Okay, sub N for new, and then I'll put a little, I'm not gonna change the color again, but that's just a little O for old, all right? Okay, so now we realize though, that the only way that the, uh, that the volume of this thing is changing is a function of the height, right? The length of this and the width are not changing, it's just the height that's being altered. Okay, now that's an important idea for what we're going to set up next. Now we said that since this is a liquid, it's going to undergo a volume expansion. So why don't we detail this formula over here on the right hand side where it says that the change in volume of a particular liquid will be equal to the coefficient of a volume expansion multiplied by the initial volume multiplied by the change in temperature. So now what I realize is I can do some substitutions, right? I can expand on this change in volume. Remember, change is always final minus initial or new minus old if I wanted to state it that way. Maybe I should have done that over here now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe this could have been the final volume and this could have been the initial volume. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but let's just say that this is the new volume minus the old volume, which is the same as the final minus the initial is gonna be then the uh, uh, volume coefficient the uh, constant there multiplied by then the old volume, which is the same as, like I said, the initial, then times our change in temperature. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now substitute in each of these equations for the volumes, okay? So here we have length times width times the new height minus the length times the width times the old height will be equal to the coefficient multiplied then by the length times the width times the old height, multiplied by change in temperature. Now, mathematically speaking, I have three terms. One, two, three. 
Each of them have a common LW, and that's what we were saying before. We can actually just cancel these, okay? Mathematically, we can factor them out and then divide them out. So this now becomes H sub N, or the new height, minus the old height, will be equal to the volume coefficient multiplied then by the old height times now our change in temperature. All right, solving for now the new height, that's what we're after. We can just bring this on over to the right-hand side, and we realize now that the new height is the beta multiplied by the old height times the change in temperature plus then the original height or the old height. And look, here it is. That's the formula, all right? So now all we're going to do is just start plugging some stuff into this. So let me just move this on over. All right, let's write now the coefficient for water, the volume. Uh, thermal coefficient of expansion is going to be 210 times 10 to the minus 6. The old height was 1 kilometer. Let's just convert that into meters, so that's 1,000 meters. The change in temperature, they said 1 degree Celsius, so that's a 1, plus then the original height of 1 kilometer, which is 1,000 meters. Okay, and let's see what this comes out to be. So this is now going to be 210 times 10 to the minus 6 times 1,000 plus 1,000. And the new height here will be 1,000. So I'm going to, I mean, if I'm going to do sig figs, this is the basically the answer, right? I mean, there's three sig figs, so I guess I should I would have an answer like this: 1.00 times 10 to the um, 10 to the uh, third, right? So it's basically the same. I mean, this is this is in terms of meters, and we started with a kilometer, so it looks like they're the same. But if I if I show the detail here of the decimals, it goes up by essentially almost a quarter of a meter. This is the exact answer now. The problem is, though, in terms of sig figs, we're kind of uncertain about these values out here, you know. So uh, scientifically, we we don't really know if it'll uh, rise that much. However, though, you know, from a pure mathematical standpoint, that would be the answer. So if that's the case, right? If if it actually does, I mean, it could actually be more than that. We don't we don't even know. It doesn't mean that it won't be it won't be a quarter of a meter. It could mean it's more than that, or it could be less than that, right? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate this very much. Please remember to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.